What's going on everyone? CJ back here with a brand new episode of the Madden 24 St. Louis Sentinels franchise. That is right, welcome back. The divisional round of the playoffs is here. We got the number one seed, of course, so first round by, and I can't even believe I'm saying this, but we are playing the Dallas Cowboys in our first playoff game of this season, season number three. They somehow snuck into the playoffs. If you guys remember, they were on the outside looking in for the longest time, and they somehow snuck into the seventh seed, and they beat the number two seed Atlanta Falcons 41 to 14. I mean, isn't that just so Madden? Like, it would not be a Madden playoffs if the Cowboys weren't in it, and we're going to have to see them. We're going to have to beat them in order to advance shouldn't be a problem because we have been able to handle the Cowboys pretty much every game we played them but still I just can't believe they're in there and getting a look at the rest of the brackets here the number three seed Seahawks beat the number six seed New Orleans Saints 28-20 and the number four seed Lions lost to the number five seed Carolina Panther Panthers so it's Sentinels Cowboys Seahawks Panthers on the NFC and over on the AFC side we got the Chiefs Ravens, Bengals, and the New York Football Jets. We'll get a quick look at some of the annual awards here before diving into this game. Patrick Mahomes is going to win league MVP, but why don't you go ahead and just put an asterisk next to that? You see number four here, JJ Ford. Had he not gotten injured and missed four weeks, I really, really think that he would have won MVP. I think he had a very strong case for it, but unfortunately, my man was sidelined, and uh, Patrick Mahomes, Jackson, and Burrow all ahead of him. And coach of the year, hey, how about that? Yours truly, CJ Smalls, wins the coach of the year award for the NFL. Well-deserved, I would say. And how about offensive player of the year, Terry McLaurin and Dudley Saxton? Not far behind either. JJ Ford also got a couple votes. But nice to see our superstar X-Factor receiver taking home that title and getting a look at defensive player of the year aaron donald wins that however emmanuel forbes and justin hayward i think justin hayward he's got to get a dev up here in the offseason i don't see any way around that offensive rookie of the year goes to pat jupin of the vikings and dwight jackson got a few nods though so nice to see he's a definitely an up-and-comer and donovan hilliard wins defensive rookie of the year for the lions uh, Tony uh, Hoover actually got some votes. No idea how because he virtually does nothing, but he finishes in eighth place. All right, there we go. That's a little bit more like it. At least JJ Ford does win best QB, so that's awesome and also well-deserved. And Dudley Saxton, best running back in the NFC. How about that? Give it up for my man Dudley. He is just, he is just like the poster child for this St. Louis Sentinels team. Him or Ford. But I know Dudley's a fan favorite, and nice to see him bring home an award there. McLaurin wins best wide receiver, so that is awesome to see. Uh, and Curtis Samuel was number three. What a strong, dynamic duo those two are for sure. Best O-lineman, we got a few nods for Ricky Stromberg, who's injured actually right now as we speak. Best defensive lineman, how about James Smith-Williams getting a few votes? He's our leading sack getter on this season, so he finishes in sixth place for best D-lineman. Nice to see my man Rashawn Gary bringing home the best linebacker and Justin Hayward, though, not far behind. I'm telling you, I'm telling you, if this man don't get a dev up to superstar dev, something is definitely wrong there. Emmanuel Forbes, best DB. Love to see that leading lead led season's over now, right? Led the NFL in picks and Kaimi Fairbairn now on the Eagles gets best kicker, but not far behind was your man, my man, Joey Sly. Yes. And there's the story right there. I mean, Patrick Mahomes uh, lead, led the league in passing yards at 4806. But look, Ford was only about 300 behind and he missed four weeks and only trailed Mahomes by three touchdowns. Now, I will say Patrick only had three interceptions. Ford had seven. So, I mean, that is, you know, there's a high chance he still would have won the MVP award. But I don't know. I, uh, Ford, as you guys know, was just uh, having a special, special type of season. Saquon Barkley led the uh, league in rushing yards at almost 1,800, but look at Dudley, not far behind at basically 1,400, and he had 20 touchdowns, which was the most in the NFL, so Dudley is definitely, definitely a bad, bad man indeed, and Terry McLaurin led the league in receiving yards at 1,649, Cooper Cup not far behind, and then also Curtis Samuel at 1,376, 
So again, that and McLaurin, 109.9 average receiving yards per game. That is just filthy, nasty, disgusting, some might say. Led the league in touchdowns as well at 15. And uh, getting a look at the defense, got to go over to the NFC because, you know, something's always glitchy with Madden. Can't look at, you're not going to see your guys, or at least I don't, when I look at the full NFL view here. But tackles, Justin Hayward amongst the top, trailing only Fred Warner and Jack Campbell. And getting a look at TFL's Deron Panth, <laughs> that's funny right there because if you guys remember back to season one, Deron Payne and John Allen was our uh, defensive line. And we traded Deron Payne away, and he he led the le, at least the NFC, probably the NFL, and TFLs at 22. But John Allen only one behind, so that's awesome. Justin Hayward up there as well with 18. So beautiful, beautiful stuff from the defense. Aaron Donald led the league in sacks as he tends to do. Micah Parsons not far behind, but get a look at James Smith Williams hitting double digits. I like it. I like it. I like it. Emmanuel Forbes led the league with 10 picks. And as far as forced fumbles, we had John Allen with two. And quite possibly the biggest storyline for this playoffs is we're not going to have John Allen. He's got a torn labrum and he's going to miss all the playoffs unless we somehow make it to the Super Bowl. I believe he will be back in time for that. So that means Glenn May, our rookie, and John Ridgway, James Smith Williams, Chase Young, the defensive line is going to have to step up because we are missing a key key piece i just showed you john allen nearly led the league in tackles for loss so uh opposing team run game could be on full display i hope it does not suffer too much uh you know on our end not having him but with that being said it is go time the playoffs are here and if you guys are fired up for some more st louis sentinels content and you're ready to see us make hopefully a deep deep playoff push please like the video and subscribe to the channel remember at 1000 subscribers i will do an nfl jersey giveaway so without further ado let's get on down to the divisional round of the nfc playoffs sentinels field and get ready for the game. We know these Cowboys very, very well. Played them so many times in this series. And for the most part, we've had their number. But I am not going to count them out. It is the Cowboys. There's a reason why they are so overpowered in Madden. Guess that's more so in simulation. But still, there's a reason why you always see them on any of these YouTuber rebuild videos. And your favorite YouTuber that you watch, Madden YouTuber. Just think, how many times do you see the Cowboys either winning the Super Bowl, Dak Prescott winning league MVP, Mike McCarthy winning coach of the year? They're overpowered, and they got a great roster. We know this roster very well, so I am, I'm not taking my foot off the gas. We are going pedal to the freaking metal today. Prescott will start this thing out in the gun here. Going to have to watch Tony Pollard again, that run defense. I'm very curious to see how it's going to do without John Allen. Quan Martin able to get in there and bring down Pollard for only a gain of three. At punter, no punter, Tressway. He'll be back next week, assuming that we are, assuming that the Sentinels are back next week. We got to make sure we take care of business here today. And uh, Prescott now with three spread out to the right. Pollard again behind him. It's going to be Pollard again. There's that run defense I was talking about. Kendall Fuller able to get him, but not until the damage was done. Pollard picks up a gain of about 16. He gets the ball all the way to the 44. Of course, this, Ca this Cowboys roster, they can beat you in so many different ways. They got the receivers. They got the quarterback, obviously, with Prescott. They got Pollard. And it looks like uh, it's going to be the Tony Pollard show here to start. James Smith-Williams drops him, but it was a nice, solid pickup of four. Gonna start here zone. Uh, going to see how that looks. You know, I may be switching to press blitzes and things like that. It's a nice catch there by the tight end. And uh, third and three. That's Schoonmaker. We didn't see him. He was injured the last time that we played. He's Cowboys, I believe. So he is back in the lineup. And if memory serves, it was Jake Ferguson and Peyton Hendershot. And those guys were the ones that were really tearing us apart here. It's going to be Pollard on the stretch. Hey, we're trying to hawk him down. He couldn't. But he got in the way and forced Pollard to keep kicking it out to the outside. And Kendall Fuller stopped him. And Mike McCarthy is going to elect a punt. Thought maybe for a moment he might decide to go for it here. You know, they're technically in plus territory, but no. He sends out Braden Mann. And it looks like we are going to be starting our opening drive here from the nine-yard line. JJ Ford just showed you, man, I what could have been. What could have been. I really think he could have won at that MVP award. It would have been tough 
seeing the uh, you know stats from Patrick, but still he definitely had a shot. I think he could have finished you know number two or number three at worst. So first and ten, got to be a little bit careful here. We are very close to our own end zone. Let's go ahead and check it down to Terry, the NFL leader in receiving yards, as you saw. He's able to pick up seven and give us just a little bit of breathing room, which we definitely needed. And here comes the number two rush man in the in the NFL. Number one, if you're counting touchdown passes, that would be one Dudley Saxton. And looking for him to have a big game today. Got to watch uh, 11 from heaven. Micah Parsons always tough to run against. And that's going to be third and two for the Saints. I'm going screen here on third and two. We got Dwight Jackson in. Only need two yards. So hoping that... Dwight can do that. He's going to have that and more. Nice block in there. Will Devlin, our superstar center. I just saw him pancake somebody six ways to Sunday. That's a really good pancake block. And Dwight Jackson is able to pick up seven, but more importantly, pick up the first down. So I definitely like that. Let's uh, we'll try Dudley. Oh, ooh, ooh, ooh. Okay, if blocks hold, we could have a big gain here to the outside, to the right side. Running to uh, the far side of the field as well. So just need some blocks to hold. Dudley's got the speed. He can do that on his own. And I will certainly take that. Picking up about 12 to 14 on that one. Leighton Vander Esch stopped him. But Dudley looking very, very good on that outside run. I want to make sure that we do keep the good old Saxtonator fresh here. So I might be rotating in Jackson here a few times. And this time we are going to try to run it straight up the gut. Dwight Jackson. Oh, Terry setting great blocks still. He's still out there setting blocks. Oh, man, if that's Dudley, we have a touchdown. If that's Dudley with his 94 speed, we have a touchdown. It's not, though. It's Dwight Jackson, but it's still a great, great game. And Terry McLaurin. See if we can see there's uh You see him out there doing the dirty work. Look at him out there setting blocks. He set two blocks. That one was on the say that last one was on the safety Donovan Wilson, but Terry set two great great blocks there and just cannot say enough. That is the you know the lost art so to speak of receivers. Yeah, you got these guys that put up you know close to 2,000, 1,800 yard seasons, but how many of them are gonna get out there and throw blocks for you? George Williams, oh he's got this easy money in the bank. That was a great touch pass from JJ Ford. I also pass led that thing. With the free form passing to the left, George Williams having a great latter part of this season here. I feel like we've called his name time and time again. And he is going to go ahead and get the first points for us here. And that was a good drive. Very good drive. Low adversity, which is what I like to see. Uh, that third down screen pass is about the only, you know, real form of adversity that I would say we faced. But aside from that, things were fluid. It was running. And we go up 7-0 against this high-powered Dallas Cowboys team. All right, drive number two here for the Cowboys. They got uh, fullback and Andy Janovich in here, so definitely got to be expecting the Pollard run. Nope, it's not. Instead, it's CeeDee Lamb, and I completely mistimed that with Forbes. That was all me. CD still going. I had a chance to limit CD Lamb to only a minimal gain, but I whiffed the tackle. And CD's a weapon. He does the rest on his own. Go ahead and test that press blitz here. See if we can get home to Prescott or possibly Pollard in the backfield. Nope. It's going to be a dump down there to Schoonmaker, the tight end. And got to watch with this Dallas Cowboys team with their tight ends. I've played them about, what, eight times now? It's probably the, no, more than that. Because we saw them in the playoffs uh, maybe ten times. I feel like every time we play them, it is the tight ends doing the most damage. There's Pollard doing some damage. Rookie Glenn May able to chase him down, but Pollard starting out averaging about six yards per carry. Prescott coming out single back now from the 38. It's going to be, of course, nope, nice play fake there. And that CD, he's open. Oh, he tried to dive and catch it. But with the manual Forbes in the area, I mean, I don't really think he affected that play too much, but I'm going to give him the credit. I mean, my man does got 10 picks on the season, so give him a little bit of credit. And here on third and five, I'll probably have Chase Young drop back as kind of an extra defender. It was a screen pass, but it was completely mistimed. Or maybe Glenn May got his big mid in there. I don't know. Whatever happened, it was not a hookup between he and Pollard. And this is going to be a long kick from Evan McPherson. We know he can drill it. He did not. That is no good wide right. Cowboys leave points on the board. And heck of a start from our defense here. 
Sentinels tipping the cap to them. They came to play it, it would appear. Two minutes to go here till the end of the first. It's going to be a play action out of single back. Going to roll out, and we're looking for Terry. I think we have him. We do. All right, Terry. Good to see you, brother. Doing some, uh, some good things, as you always do. Go ahead and do a little dance on him. Yeah, that's right. Tell him what time it is. I think you saw him pointing to the watch there. Terry definitely, Terry always knows what time it is. His Rolex is always ticking, and it's always ticking right because he knows how to pick up big plays and get the job done. Now, Ford's X Factor is now activated too, so got to take note of that. That good old Dots, Dudley going to cut up, and about a gain of six or so, I'll certainly take it. Makes it second and four from the 13. Got a double team Micah Parsons here. I think if we can successfully do that, and if Terry holds a block, we may be able to seal the edge. And it was just too much traffic in there, too much riffraff needed to maybe motion over Bart Burns or a tight end or something like that to really give ourselves a fair shot. Now, on third and three, I feel like the move here might be kind of like stick. Out of single back, don't need to go for the home run shot necessarily. Just have to get three yards. That's the goal. Probably looking at the right side here with Burns and McLaurin. It's Burns. Think he might have it. He does. Wow. Ford six for six for 72 and a big touchdown. That's going to put it at the end of the first quarter. So far, Sentinels are looking like the real deal. How about 67 rushing yards? You love to see that from our uh, halfback duo, Dwight Jackson and Dudley Saxton. Right now, though, we got seven yards until the promised land, so you know, you know J.J. Ford and the boys are cooking something up here. Coach is saying a lot of outside stretches with Dudley, and I kind of like that. Now, this time, I am going to learn from my past mistakes. Let's go ahead and put Cole Turner over here, and going to also have Dudley run it to the left side as well. Not letting me change it, though, for some reason. Well, I guess we're running to the right. Didn't really want to do that, but that's the move. Well, let me flip it. Probably maybe because I switched Cole Turner over there. I have no idea. And now it's second and goal from the six. Got some curls here working. And oh, I'm going to get sacked. Nope. Oh. I had McLaurin for a second, but I missed him. By the time I reacted, I had defenders all up in J.J. Ford's grill. This is the first little bit of adversity that we have faced. Third and goal from the six. Got uh, McLaurin and Samuel on some slant routes. It's McLaurin. Hang on, buddy. There. Yes, I was going to say, okay. God, McLaurin got popped there at the end, man. He got popped. Took a vicious shot. But he was forward progress. He was, you know, he got tackled out of the end zone. But when he caught the ball, he was in the end zone. Nice step up in the pocket, too, by J.J. Ford. And uh, Floyd Anderson, who, that's the auto-generated guy. I remember him from last game. The corner, he played great. He was there guarding McLaurin one-on-one. -on -one. It's a tall task for anybody. Obviously, as you see, Terry led the league in receiving yards. And speaking of leading, we lead this game 14-0. So we'll have to see what McCarthy has drawn up on the good old play sheet. So far, this Sentinels team has pretty much shut down everything from Dak and McCarthy and the boys. Prescott coming out gun here. Not convinced it won't be something like inside zone, though. So uh, it's going to be a play fake. And that's, oh, it's a pick from Quan Martin. Oh, my God. I wasn't even usered up on him. He just jumped and plucked that thing from the sky. Prescott had a wide open receiver on a little in route. And Jartavius Quan Martin, let's see if we can see that replay again. Watch him. He just read the eyes of Prescott. He had Brandon Cooks was getting open there on the inside. And Quan Martin read his eyes the entire time, jumped up from the sky to pick that thing off. Ball back to the Sentinels. Let's go ahead and ID up Parsons as the mic. This is going to be inside zone. They got defenders in the A gap. And that time they actually didn't drop out. They usually do. But look at Saxton. He's hungry. Demarcus Lawrence actually pushes him forward for an extra couple yards. But Dudley is running great to start. He's definitely got the fresh legs. And you know what? In order to keep those bad boys fresh, so fresh and so clean, we are going to bring in Dwight Jackson here. He had a monster gain earlier of about 30 plus. So maybe he can uh, repeat that. Let's have McLaurin kind of go out far side there. And also we're going to slide the protection to the left. Trying to get all the blocking on this side. Dwight's got a little bit of space. Tried to throw a stiff arm there on Leighton Vander Esch. And didn't really work so well. But pick up a five, still nice. Coach is really 
suggesting pretty much all passes and I really I really don't want that I really don't want all passes I'm probably gonna audible yeah I'm gonna audible into inside zone here I don't see any reason why gotta ID up the proper defender as the mic I see no reason why Dudley can't pick this up although yep he's got a crease found it and almost scored Sentinels kind of running away with this thing. Wow. Cowboys came out in perfect defense for the run. We're going to hopefully run this right up the gut with Saxton and Stonewall. Okay. Dudley is averaging five and a half on the ground. Here's my motto. If at first you don't succeed, keep feeding Saxton. That's, that's what he does. That's what he does. And that's going to be a walk in the park. Down Central Park. Strolling. Birds chirping. Grass green. Sprinklers running. No, what I'm saying is that he, there was nothing. Dudley didn't even get touched. I mean, free walk into the end zone. And yeah, guys, I mean, 21-0. Look, I'm still, though, I'm not taking my foot off the gas. I know this Cowboys team. I know how things can change. But I am McDonald's loving it. This score right here. And if Sentinels keep playing the way that they're playing right now, man, I'm just telling you. We got robbed last year, lost in the NFC playoffs to, to NFC conference playoffs to these guys, these Cowboys right here. And I'm just, I'm telling you, something feels special about it. A lot of work to be done. Got to grab our shovel and our axes here and our wheelbarrows. But I don't know. This could be our year. What will Prescott do here? Will he continue feeding Pollard? I mean, you got to kind of feel like you got to start picking up some chunk plays, right? I mean, it's not time to panic and there is... Schoonmaker, who's been about the only bright spot, I would say, of this offense. He may have all the yards. No, CD has at least one catch. But aside from CD, it's pretty much been Schoonmaker's been their main, main weapon. And the Cowboys do got the ball pretty much at midfield here. Um, so I'm going to try to get Jamin Davis here in the backfield. We're looking. Schoonmaker again. Is he the only Cowboy that uh, participated in practice this week? I mean, con, sarn it. Huh? Dak staying single back here, so definitely got eyes on Pollard, but I suppose I should probably have eyes on Schoonmaker. He's been the main one that's been tearing us up, and oh God, we cannot, that's that's not good right there. Not because it's John Ridgeway. I mean, I can't even think of the last time I called his name, but we don't have any D-tackle depth. It's Glenn May and who else? I mean, we're going to have to, I don't even know who's going to be in here right now. It is uh, Benning, I can't even say his last name, Potato? Potato? Potawe? I, that's how often I play with him. I can't even pronounce his name. Jamin Davis canceling blitz. Oh, I think that was Tony Hoover. Had a free shot on Prescott and missed it. And how about him connecting with CeeDee Lamb? That was clutch, and the Cowboys definitely needed that. And yeah, I mean, Racy Kerr is the next guy up on the field, which I can promise you. I guess I can't promise. I don't know every episode. I can say with a high degree of confidence that I've never called Racy Kerr's number in this series and guess what i don't want to start that today so nice to see ridgeway coming back it's pollard he's got some blocks trying to find something and now tony knight goes down okay so defense needs you to kind of make sure our conditioning i should say our our staff right it's on our staff to make sure our players are conditioned week in and week out but whoever's responsibility it is to make sure the defense is conditioned gonna need you to step up or you might be fired all right you hear me Need our players to stay healthy. Need a sack on Prescott. And not a sack, but the next best thing is a throwaway. Fourth and seven. They're going to bring out Evan McPherson again. And they need to put some points on the board. We still got four and a half minutes to put up more. Cowboys need this. And McPherson able to atone for his previous sins by making that one. But I'm sure three is not what McCarthy and the team were looking for. No. Mesh spot out of gun. I like that. Might have uh, Jahan Dotson or actually Bart Burns getting open still. Ford let him beautifully. Bart Burns starting to pick up his game. We're calling his name a lot today. And what an acquisition Bart has been. He, I didn't, I showed the NFL stats. I didn't show our individual team stats. But I believe he was third on the team. Uh, just missed a thousand yards, I want to say. And I, uh, I want to streak to Curtis, but... There's, look, there's no sense in do, right now we got the game at, in, in our control, well within our control. So there's no we'll need to do, unless we have to, right? 
No need to do any crazy shots downfield or force anything. And right now, we're just trying to continue picking up yards and add a little bit extra onto this uh, scoreboard before halftime. Uh, George Williams, that was a great defense there by Jonathan or uh, Donovan Wilson. And now Andrew Wiley, our offensive lineman, goes down. Cowboys defense really needs this, and uh, I don't want them to have it. I'm selfish. I don't want them to have it. So, Terry, let's make it happen. Thank you. Ever so reliable in the middle of the field. And Terry is always bracing for contact. I feel like 90% of his passes are difficult catches where he does, in fact, have to absorb contact. And he does that at just such a high, high level. Now, we got Dwight Jackson uh, back in here. This is the same play, I believe, that we picked up that big, massive gain on earlier. So looking to do the same. Got to make sure we hold a block on Parsons, which we did. However, Donovan Wilson from his safety spot was there to get us. And that will bring up the two-minute warning. Coach is saying screen to Jackson. And I kind of like that because two reasons. One, we don't have to get uh, all 10 yards back here. Not sure if the Cowboys would elect to go timeout. But we also want that clock to kind of tick down too. Want to be the last ones to score. Or rather, you know, not let the Cowboys score. What a vicious juke from Jackson. That is not his game at all, but he made it look very easy on that one. And now certainly the Cowboys will not call timeout. There would be no reason to do that. And we can kind of just milk this clock, try to score with a limited amount of seconds to go and really go into the locker room feeling great about ourselves. Dwight Jackson should be feeling great about himself too. Four rushes for 43 yards. Nice job. I believe we get the ball back, right? Didn't the Cowboys? Yeah, the Cowboys got the ball to start and they punted it. So we really have a chance to open this thing up here, man. If we can come away with a score and then also get the ball back as well after halftime, I mean, we got a chance to really just kind of put this one to bed. I mean, again, not necessarily. Stranger things have happened. Still got two full quarters of football to go. I realize that. But, I mean, we are just, the Cowboys cannot do anything against us. And with 30, uh, Terry getting double teamed too, by the way. They're really worried about him. 30 seconds to go. Want to score, but don't even necessarily have to score on this one. We'll probably we'll call a timeout here. Yeah, call a timeout and evaluate. Going single back stick. Terry has the option to curl or go out to the left. So he will probably be my first read. Nope, it's Bart Burns. Sure handed as always. Leighton Vander Esch was right there in the vicinity, but you know why we completed that pass? Because we got J.J. Ford back. Tell me that wouldn't have been a Sam Howell interception. I'm I'm not confident that it wouldn't have been, but I'm not confident that it would have been either. I could have saw it going either way. But with Ford, it's like you just, you just know. You just know his passes are going to be crisp and, you know, delivered with high velocity and perfect precision. And that should be the last play before halftime. We'll have to see. But 28-3 with a chance to go up even more in this divisional round. And the Baltimore Ravens knocked off the Kansas City Chiefs, too. I see at the bottom, 38-17. to That is crazy. Chiefs were the number one seed in the AFC. Obviously, Mahomes won MVP. And they're no longer in this playoff. So if we make it to the Super Bowl, not saying we will. We won't have to worry about playing the Chiefs, which I definitely, definitely am a fan of. 28 to 3. And look at that 160 passing yards to 91 and 96 rushing yards to 42. We have controlled the game in all phases. And we, assuming that we go on to win this one, we are going to await the winner of the Panthers and the Seahawks, who I know we play the Seahawks. Not sure if we play the Panthers this year. We played the Seahawks earlier on in the year and just completely dominated them. But I do feel like just outside looking in, seeing week to week franchises or the episodes, I mean, I feel like the Panthers have been playing really good and have been good. And I want to say they may have actually beaten us. Not sure if it was this season or last season, but still, um, I like our odds against both those teams. I'm going to go blitz counter. I did it to start. It worked out pretty good. And I believe I went defend medium pass for Dak. And that certainly worked out well. So, you know me, guys. I'm a simple man. If it ain't broke, don't fix it. If we do everything carbon copy that we just did in the first half, this one is going to be 56 to 6, and we will be advancing on to the next round of the playoffs. Starting off this third quarter here, like I said, not taking my foot off of the gas here because I know these Cowboys, and that may be a hold. It was a great pass by Ford. Threaded the needle, 
Let's see if it's roughing. That's a hold. That's unfortunate. That is unfortunate, and it is on superstar center Will Devlin, who rarely makes mistakes, so we can't really hold that against him too much. But, man, that wiped out a big, big play indeed. I'm going to have George Williams come over here to the right side. Going to have our center and our right guard pulling for Dudley. So uh, I think I'm going to ID up Layton as the mic. And if we can hold a block on Parsons, we might have something here, which we did hold the block on Parsons. But Donovan Wilson with the great play wreck on that one was able to sniff that thing out and shut it down. Terry Press could be an option. We know how well that works. Uh, definitely not going to go Curtis Samuel's way because they got Trayvon Diggs on that side. Let's see. I don't like the press read. I like Burns, though. Burns is open. This could be a massive play, and it is. Malik Hooker comes over to stop it. Oh, Bart Burns having himself a game here in this divisional round of the playoffs. And that is great to see because Bart is certainly a weapon indeed. Came out verticals and everybody but Curtis Samuel went streaking. So the safeties were going to have to make. Somebody was going to be open on that play. It was just a matter of who. And I started my read over there on the left to Terry. But uh, was successfully able to work through my progressions and find Bart Burns on the right side. I'm just showing you guys how these cogs operate here. You know, when I'm playing Madden, it's it's hard. Look, I'm just going to go out and say it. It's difficult to make reads and commentate. Apparently, it's difficult to not get holds now in this third quarter because that one is certainly coming back. But I don't record these. I don't play the game and then go back and record. Like, I'm recording right now. I think you guys know this. As the This is all happening in real time. Like, I'm not going back and... You know, no, no knock to people that do that, by the way, either, because it still makes for great content. But it can definitely be difficult at times to, you know, try to provide good commentary and also, you know, figure out what's going on on the field and make reads and stuff like that. We're going to keep going to Bart because why not? This is Bart Burns game, by the way. Ford 16 for 18, 214 and three touchdowns. Tell me that is not a J.J. Ford stat line. Bart Burns could be open in the middle or possibly Terry on this drag. We're going to go to Bart. And that is actually picked off by Leighton Vander Esch. And we this is going to be a pick six. Are you kidding me? Oh, my God, dude. Leighton Vander Esch retired in real life. Not even, all, not even in the NFL anymore due to his neck issues. And what happened there? Maybe I just had tunnel vision on Burns, but I can't believe... Okay, I can believe that Leighton picked it off, all right? I'm not upset about that. I am upset about that. Yeah, I should have definitely went Terry on the drag. That's on me. But, I mean, there's no excuse for this to be a pick six. I mean, Leighton Vander Esch is not... Like, I mean, he's good, but I really can't see him. Like, no one's able to catch him, really? Not Dudley, not Terry, not Samuel... And will that be the jolt of energy that the Cowboys need to get back in this one? Still got a long way to go. They're still down three scores. But man, oh man, is that going to help? And a rare interception thrown by Ford. So I got to make sure I clean that nonsense up now. All right, nothing to see here, guys. No worries. You know, we're still definitely in the driver's seat. And uh, it's going to continue playing the same type of game that we've played all day. We're going to have Dwight Jackson on the outside, and someone needs to block Leighton Vander Esch. He just had a big pick six. Now Bart Burns gets injured. We're seeing Sentinels dropping like flies. I'm going to have to have a staff meeting and pull up with our strength and conditioning coaches because uh, I don't know the type of regimen that they got these guys on. I do know, however, that people are going streaking, right? Terry, uh, their single high safety so this could be, this is what Terry does best. Can we connect? We do. Terry could have a one play touchdown. They're not going to be able to catch him with Floyd Anderson. How about them apples? Yeah, that pick six doesn't mean nothing now. It was a great play, sure. But we just got all that back in one play. The play wreck by me was on full display. Perfect dot from four. And Terry does the rest. Bar Burns will come back, so that's good. Got to make sure, look, as much as we still got to lock in on this game and we still got work to do, I'd be lying if I wasn't, you know, if I didn't tell you that I wasn't thinking about the next game. Got to make sure we're at nearly full strength. If everything goes according to plan, 
and nobody else gets hurt. The only player we're going to be missing for next game will be Jonathan Allen, and I think Andrew Wiley got hurt earlier in this one, our tackle, and so he probably won't be there. But definitely, you know, depending on what happens on this drive and the start of the fourth quarter, if things keep going well like they have been, might have to start pulling players. But if Dallas scores here, we still got ourselves a ball game. And Pollard looking for lanes. There's nothing there. James Smith-Williams and others were there to meet him for a loss of one on the play. Dak Singleback, interesting. I uh, thought he would probably be shotgun on this one, but he is not. That's CD on the drag. And CD, you can see these nuts because well, I don't want to see you start to pick up the pace and start getting plays. That's about the last thing that I want to happen because we know that CD is a weapon for sure. And uh, third and four here, we're just going to play good zone coverage. Dak operating out of the pistol. Where's he going to go? He is going to find CD. So CD starting to pick up the pace here and moves the chains for the Cowboys. I think I'm going to go press blitz. Uh, sack on Dak, you know, something like that. That'll pretty much seal this drive, I think. Of course, still work to be done, like I keep saying. And Fuller, there we go. Perfect timing, Houston pick. Look, we talk about Emmanuel Forbes and all his accolades this year. Do not forget that that specimen right there, Kendall Fuller, he led the league in interceptions, I believe, last season. Definitely led our team. He's a superstar player as well. And just locked down blanket coverage on Gallup. Gallup never stood a chance on that one. Balls back to the Sentinels, and we are firmly in cruise control on this one. And it is all Sentinels in this third quarter, baby. Aside from that, Crazy pick six from Vander Esch, which I still am not convinced how he was able to house that thing. But aside from that, it is all Sentinels here in the third quarter. And if this is the way that we're going to play against a high-powered team like the Cowboys, I really feel confident against either the Panthers or the Seahawks, whoever it ends up being. Saxon with the speed. He's at 75 now. Gets the ball all the way down to the 27 of the boys. Third down and four. Third quarter here ticking down. And I'm going to try to pick this up and just keep the good times rolling. Jahan, I should have. Uh, man, I had him. It was a great read, but I should have touched past it and I bullet passed it. Lucky there that Jonathan Jones, the corner, the 10-year pro in this franchise at least out of Auburn so we're gonna go ahead and settle for a field goal here I mean you know whatever we're still up big would have loved to pound it into the end zone and really put an exclamation point on this but still a 28 point game so a huge mountain to climb for McCarthy and the Cowboys and Sentinels continue to just play great in this one I do see the Carolina Panthers did beat the Seahawks so a lot of some of the uh the Seahawks were the third seed and the Falcons were the two seed so the high seeds in the NFC, aside from us, obviously, losing some upset games, it would appear. So assuming that we go on to win this, which throws like that from Prescott, will pretty much uh, sign, stamp, and deliver that notion. We're going to be going up against Bryce Young and the Carolina Panthers. Don't remember their roster, so we'll definitely check that out pregame. Next episode, assuming that we go on to win this one, there's CD making some plays, though. He's trying his best to keep him in this, but is it a case of too little too late? I mean, three scores, look, that is, no, the answer to that question is no. It is not too little too late. Three scores is nothing, especially in Madden, with a full quarter of football to play. I mean, as, as long as we continue playing good like we have, it'll be very difficult to accomplish. I need my defensive linemen to stop getting injured, please. So I'm not trying to bring in freaking Racy Kerr and guys like that. I'm going zone. I'm guessing pass. I'm shading inside. I really feel confident that this will be a Prescott pass, which it is. And it's, oh my God, I whiffed the tackle. No, come on, man. CD Lamb is single-handedly trying to keep the Cowboys in this one. So far, I would say he's succeeding. And John Ridgway not going to come back. So enter Racy Kerr. This is the longest, like, minute and 30 seconds of... The end of a quarter that I've ever seen. We just cannot get this thing to the fourth quarter to save our life. And Tony Hoover, oh my God, waited all season for a pick. He did not have a pick in the entire regular season. And he gets a pick six in the playoffs against Dak Prescott. Oh my God, you cannot write the script any crazier than that. 
That was our 10th overall pick, first round out of Washington. We traded up with the Packers to get him. And so far, this entire regular season, I have been saying, this man is a bust, this man is a bust. And for the most part, he kind of was. But how about a pick six in his first playoff game as an NFL player? And if it wasn't over before, oh my God, 35-point game. We can't, this is this is a never-ending third quarter, by the way. I'm going to cut a majority of the fourth, I presume. But wow, I can't believe that. Good for Tony. Good for Tony. Tony Hoover just sucked in that ball like a vacuum cleaner. Get it, Hoover? Vacuum cleaner? Suck? Ball? Yeah, sorry. All right, so massive play here. Cowboys scored, by the way. Tony Pollard uh, caught a pass from Dak. But, so we punted. It was a uh, three and out. And I want you to watch the punt here. You know, good punt, good punt. Return man, and look at, I want you to watch number 54. All right, you guys know who that is. That's is Justin Hayward. I want you to watch the massive hit. Boom! Look at that pig skin in the air, buddy. Sentinels dive on it, Milo Eifler. And we get the ball back. That is that is why, pregame, I was saying that Justin Hayward, he has to get a dev up. I mean, he is literally, I'm so happy that we drafted him. He has been nothing, he's been everything that I have expected and more since acquiring him. And plays like that will show you why. Dudley, just go down. Don't need you to score, brother. Dudley does go over 100 yards, though. And Justin Hayward, what a massive, massive play indeed. Cowboys were still probably out of it, but they were feeling good about themselves. Got a touchdown, forced a punt from us. Justin Hayward says, hi, it's me. Here to wreck your day and end your season. Let's go outside with Dwight Jackson here. Let's see if we can get the rookie out of UAB, a playoff tutty, and we are 50 bomb on the Cowboys. Stick a fork in it, mama. This one is done and ready to be served. On to the next round. I mean, who do you highlight? Who do you highlight in a game like this? Do you highlight J.J. Ford? We always highlight J.J. Ford. Do you highlight Dudley Saxton? Do you highlight Kurt, uh, Terry McLaurin? Bart Burns had a great game. Dwight Jackson, massive play to open I things up. Do you highlight our defense, who's been playing two picks and a forced fumble? I mean, this is the definition of a complete team. Cannot think of too many holes, you know? Yes, we can maybe improve a little bit on the defensive line. Yes, we can maybe improve a little bit in the linebackers, but backup tight end would be nice to have. But this is a complete team in every single facet of the word, of the definition. And we are going to be hard to stop in this postseason. If a high power roster like the Cowboys can't do it, the Chiefs are out of the AFC, right? They're not even in it anymore. Look at Benjamin St. Juice making plays. This Sentinels team, I'm telling you, it is something special. And that will do it here in Sentinels Field. 52 to 24. Cowboys put up another touchdown. It was just garbage time. It reminds me almost of uh, that Packers playoff game this previous season against the Cowboys, which I bring up to every Cowboy fan as often as I possibly can. Dak's stats are probably going to look good. I mean, he had three picks, but he's going to have a lot of yards, a couple touchdowns, but still... It was domination from the opening whistle. And like I said earlier, I mean, who do you give credit to? Ford, who does, I mean, the same things every single game. 304 passing yards, 82% completion, four touchdowns. That one pick, a little concerning. But, I mean, Dak, yeah, okay, the yards look nice, but three interceptions, 66% completion. And then you look at the running game. Dudley Saxton, 20 for 112 and a touchdown. Average over five and a half per game. Dwight Jackson, or per, you know, per play, I should say. Dwight Jackson averaged 6.2 yards per play. And then you look at the receivers. McLaurin, 138 and two touchdowns. Uh, where's Bart Burns? He had a great game, too. Six for 85. Says he's injured, but I, I think that he's okay. And then you look at our defense, right? Tony Hoover, Kendall Fuller, Quan Martin. I mean, our leading interception getter in the league didn't even have a pick this game. And we still had three. So, I mean, Sentinels just, we really came together in this one. Dallas Cowboys are never an easy team to play. And we took care of business. They thought they had us figured out, but we were one step ahead the whole game. Such a great feeling to send a bitter rival home. I mean, Andrew, you didn't do too much. You got injured, but you're right. 
we did have him figured out. And coach says it's just another step. As far as I'm concerned, every team in the way of a Super Bowl is our rival. So let's keep bringing this passion. I think they could do it. Our defense is going to have plus five hit power for the next game. And we also get extra five staff points, which is cool. And we are going to be moving on to take on the Carolina Panthers in the NFC Championship. So we're right back where we were last week or last, last week, last last season. Win this game against the 11 and 6 Panthers and we move on to the Super Bowl. So I hope you guys are excited as I am for the next episode. That is going to do it for me tonight. But as always, I appreciate you stopping by. I will catch you on the next one. Until then. Peace.